Hello. I hope that you have all had a lovely week, a chill week. Those are my favorite kinds of week. That's why I'm wishing that type of week upon you. So we are here, Module 4. It's the fourth week. We're officially a full month in, so woohoo! A round of applause for that. <laughs> round of applause for you for still being in the race. So, uh, mad respect. So, if you'll take a look here, the um, first thing to note is that the autoethnography paper is due this Saturday by 11.59 p.m., so that's the final draft of that. And I want to thank you all for such awesome engagement with the first workshop. Honestly, I, I, I saw you guys marking up papers. I saw you leaving um, plenty of comments, and, and uh, the engagement was real. So uh, keep that up, and I, I commend you all on um, a job well done there. Um so the other thing is the uh, this one says begin research paper, uh, which we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, but first, let's go to our class. Let's go to our module. All right, here we go, module four. You'll see that the first the first item on the module is the assignment link for your autoethnography paper. So it's right here, uh, and that's due Saturday by 11:59 p.m. Remember, accepted formats are .doc, .docx, and .pdf. Just as you've, as you have been, um, as 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 you have been doing anyway. So just uh, carry on that path. <laughs> uh, the other thing I want to remind you of is the works cited page. Remember, this paper has a mandatory works cited um, for G, James Paul G and uh, Etienne Wenger too. Um, because the article, the concepts, communities of practice, and discourse communities come from those articles. So remember that. And remember I gave you that life hack to go ahead and check out the student sample essays. You can just copy and paste uh, the Works Cited page from, from those. And the student, sa student sample essays, uh, you can find those on uh, last week's module. So go ahead and take a look at that. Mm, okay, so that's it for autoethnography. Um, like I said, you guys did awesome with your with your workshops, and I, I really look forward uh, to to read with what you come up with. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about this one. So, research paper prompt, which is the second item. So, go ahead and click that, and download the document, the Word document here. All right. So. Um, our summer term, guys, is only two months. It's eight weeks. Usually in my semester classes, uh, we have four es four major essays. But because this is only two months, we're only doing two papers. You already did the autoethnography, um, or at least the, the deadline is uh, this Saturday. Um, so we, 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 we have done that one. And uh, this is the last one. This is the last major writing essay. Um, so it's the it's the final it's the final uh, it's the final major paper. <laughs> I like to call it the piece de resistance, which is the um, it's like the the final the final hurrah, the, the final fight, um, the final detail. <laughs> so um, this is it. It's here's the here's the prompt. So let's go ahead and let's let's take a look at that. We have well, as you can see, we have a light bulb. We have we have solar panels and we have windmills. What could this be about, you might be asking. As you can see here, um, propose a solution to an issue slash problem. So this, this is an issue to solution uh, paper. So check this out. <clears throat> Throughout the span of time, humankind has had to continually seek out solutions to issues at hand. For example, the telephone was invented to facilitate a streamlined method of communication across vast distances. The microwave was brought forth as a tool for quickly heating up meals, etc. Our species has always had to adapt has always had to adapt solutions to issues as they arise, from serious issues to lighter ones. We as a people have managed to move forward 
through ingenious invention and collaboration. This assignment is an opportunity for you to put your own foot forward by offering your own solution to an issue slash problem. What makes this project research is the fact that you're required to draw from a, minim a minimum of four secondary sources to introduce your explored issue and support your proposed solution. If you recall, we've been talking about intertextuality, right? Remember that we said how you as an academic writer are putting other sources in conversation. <clears throat> You're engaged in conversation with other sources. I actually saw some of you doing this with your current event, um, which was pretty cool, <laughs> uh, even though it wasn't a mandatory requirement for current event, but look at you, you were doing it. So um, but that's precisely what we're going to be doing here, is placing uh, sources in conversation. You're, and remember, as a lawyer, you're the one leading this conversation, right? This this central argument, this central thesis, which in this case is um, the the, uh, the the issue and the solution. Okay, um, what is it that you're proposing that we do about this issue? That's your that's your thesis. That's your central argument here, and you're going to be using outside sources <clears throat> to help you with that. Just as a lawyer uses witnesses and exhibits to bolster their argument. Um, so here's a little ex example that if I was a student, if I was potentially writing it, uh, so check this out. I'm going to get some water. Excuse me a sec. Okay, so um, let's return to if I was a student. This is a hypothetical uh, issue and solution just so you can get an idea. So for example, if I was arguing for the importance of switching over to an electric car, I would draw from my secondary sources to frame the environmental harm caused by fossil fuels. I would use my research to explain how oil is the most consumed form of fossil fuel for energy conversion. I would then move to forward the fact that our planet has a limited fossil fuel reserve. Thanks to my front-loading the reader, with the context behind my chosen issue. I would then draw from my research to support my argument for switching over to an electric car. So uh, FYI, when we say fossil fuel, that includes things like oil and, and, and petroleum. And these are fuels that are found in our Earth, but the thing is that there's a limited supply. Um, so they're, they're definitely, you know, the <laughs> It's not going to last forever. And on top of that, um, we're using it everywhere. We're using it in our, um, when we drive our cars, our buses. Um, we burn, we burn uh, fossil fuels in factories. So all of this exhaust of the burning of fossil fuels uh, is, is creating a greenhouse effect. Um, I don't know if you've ever actually been in a greenhouse where it's like the glass building with all these plants, and it's, it's very humid. <laughs> Um, so, so similarly, um, just like the the actual glass um, traps um, all the byproducts of of the plants, then so too do, does our atmosphere trap um, all, all all of these negative byproducts like carbon monoxide um, from our burning of fossil fuels, um, thus contributing to the to climate change. So. That's what we mean when we say fossil fuel. Think about gasoline, think about petroleum, think about oil. Um, and I remind you, this is just, if I was a student writing this paper, then this is a hypothetical issue and solution, just so you can get an idea of what this could potentially look like. Okay, so here's some guiding questions. I know that when I was a student and I, when, I was a present, when I was presented with a prompt, I always benefited from guiding questions. So this little section is the issue, um, is the issue portion, and this is the solution portion. <clears throat> what is the issue or problem that you're moving to solve? Why is it an issue? Who does it affect? What's the big deal? So what? <laughs> Prove to your reader that it's a big deal. Why? Why should they care? What is at stake? What is your proposed solution? So now we go into the solution part. Why will your solution work? 
Why is your solution better than others? What might those opposing your solution say against it? How would you defend your solution? What are the costs of your solution? So when we see that word cost, we instantly think of money. But uh, the cost of something is really what does it take to make it happen? In the case of, of commerce, right, um, to get a product or a service, uh, the cost is, is money. But if we return to that initial definition of what it takes to make something happen, what it takes to to enact something, um, think about our own bodies, right? So the cost to keep our bodies functioning is calories, right? Um, so the, 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 the food that, that we eat, um, the nutrients that we take in through our through our veggies and through our fruits, hopefully you guys are eating that. Um, the proteins too. So, food is is what it costs to keep our bodies um, to keep our bodies going and functioning, right? So, why I'm talking about this is because when we talk about what are the costs of your solution, it's just precisely this: what does it actually take to make your solution? Um, come into fruition, to enact it? What does it take to make it happen? Do your solutions' pros outweigh any cons that I may involve? So we can connect this with this. Let's say that your solution is something so specific that it's calling for a rare mineral or ore that is only found in one place on our planet. <laughs> that truly would not be viable because of, of just how rare that central material would be, right? So it would be an instance where, where certainly um, the cons would outweigh the pros and it would not be viable because <laughs> it would be so difficult to actually make happen. So the cost would be too high in that instance. So viability is huge. Um, bear that in mind. Is, is your solution, if your solution is viable or not, before uh, moving forward to propose it. How would your so how would your proposed solution make the world a better place? Um, so you can consider that um, micro to macro, right? So in the in the bigger scheme of things, how how will your solution help, right? Um, and I, I think it's best to keep your focus upon the issue itself, right? So how will how will the um, how how will the fixing this issue or um, helping with this issue make a difference in the in the in the greater scheme of things so the main thing guys is is that i, I want to remind you i'm not asking you to reinvent the wheel <laughs> or rediscover fire no um honestly guys sometimes issues are so big that it's just so complex and your proposal if your proposal helps with that issue then that is considered a, a solution. So I'm not asking you um, to entirely fix world hunger, uh, find a solution to world hunger. Or I'm not entirely to um, find a solution to the, to, to AIDS and, and HIV. Um, you know, there's huge things. There are these huge, huge issues. But what you can do is, with your proposal, you can help towards that issue. So if your if your solution is helping towards that issue, then then that's sufficient. So um, the main thing, guys, is to choose something that you care about. <clears throat> this is one of those assignments where you have to work backwards. You need to ask yourself, self, what is something that I care about? Um, and now I ask you, <laughs> um, do you care about social issues? Do you care about things pertaining to justice? Do you care about the environment? Do you care about uh, things pertaining to technology? Do you care about workers' conditions, um, do you care about minimum wage and and um, and, and that be, being enough to, to live off of or not? Um, do you care about uh, uh, gun reform? Do you care about um, doping in sports? Um, do you care about <clears throat> how players are treated um, you know, by by doctors when they get hurt. Um, I'm thinking about uh, Kevin Durant, because <laughs> um, 
Now now he's a free, free agent. Um, he's still hurt, though. <clears throat> Do you care about uh, cleaning up the beach? So, honestly, l- let's say that uh, la- uh, last weekend uh, you were at Santa, Mon- uh, Santa Monica Beach, right? And you noticed that there was more litter than usual. And also you noticed that there were less trash bins. Uh, so... If your issue is that is is the fact that uh, Santa Monica was more is more trashed, then you can propose more um, trash bins or or even uh, more more um, vigilance to make sure that littering doesn't happen. And you can up the fee. Sorry, you can up the fines for people who do litter. Um, that's just an example. So that's just to prove to you that your issue doesn't have to be something controversial or enormous or huge. It's just something that you care about. That's what makes this paper fun and so engaging, really, because you're going to be researching and learning about things that you actually care about. Um, another cool one, may, maybe you care about um, obesity and, 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 and health. So maybe your solution could be uh, a, a clean diet of made up of whole foods and, and, and exercising, right? So um, what do you care about? Okay, so in terms of requirements, um, it's a minimum of four pages. MLA, just like we've been learning, hopefully you feel more oriented with with MLA, one-inch margins, Times New Roman or Arial, 12-point font, double space, just as you have been doing. Here's that reminder. You need to draw um, from a minimum of four credible outside sources. So, at least four. And at least two of those must come from the Chafee College Library Research Database, which I'm going to um, upload a a video that a librarian at Citrus College um, actually did. Um, I it was cool because um, during real time, like like she, she had this workshop. Uh, I asked the librarian here at Chafee, and um, it doesn't seem like they do something like that, but I, I, I really feel like it would be beneficial to you just to learn how the database works, um, how the databases that we have access to um, work, and how to actually navigate the Chafee Library um, data, database s- system. Um, so I'm going. that's going to be the, the next video. Um, and actually, there's going to be one small, small difference. Um, let me, let me actually, let's actually pull up the uh, Chafee, Chafee College Library page. So um, I'm going to just Google this Chafee Col- yeah, Chafee College Library. So we click here. Everything's going to be the same as the Citrus College um, research workshop that the librarian gave, except for maybe the, the interface. So this is how our page looks. And you're going to click here, Articles and Database List, um, and uh, the, the the databases that the um, librarian from Citrus in the video that I'm, I'm going to share is going to reference. You you'll you'll find them here. It's likely that there will be some that might not be present, but um, for the for the most part, most that she'll mention will be av- will be available. Uh, I know for a fact like Canopy is not available, but it's it's okay. So um, the, the the next thing, guys, is to actually log in. You just log in just like you do with with Canvas and and my Chafee View. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, and I will actually link the Chafee College Library page to um, to I will I will actually link it below this video. So uh, that's going to be helpful. So it's it's just that the interface might be a little bit different from the workshop that I'm going to share um, that the Citrus College librarian gave, um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of small potatoes really. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and return to the prompt itself. Okay, um, in terms of points, guys, the, we are going to have a peer review workshop just like we did with autoethnography. It's going to be the same format and concept. Um, that's worth 20. Um, and then for a correct MLA and works cited page in your essay, it'll be five. And then the essay itself is worth 125. So a grand total of 150, which is quite a bit. 
So you have to do this. Um, the workshop week will be Jul uh, July 7th and 13th. And uh, the final draft is due on our last, 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 last day of, of our term, <laughs> which is July 26th um, by 11.59 p.m. So you, you have about a month. You have a little bit over a month, actually. But I just wanted to present this to you so you can begin to think about it. Um, here's a grading criteria to help you, to help make sure that you're on track. All right. Let's see. I think there's uh, one more thing, which is the, the outline. Okay, cool. So, oh no, this one too. Uh, so we went over the prompt. Uh, if, if you want to look at some student sample essays, these are three anonymous students who uh, took my class and submitted um, the their iteration of of this essay, and they got they uh, achieved at least a ninety percent. So you can take a look at what some potential iterations of this paper might look like. Um, this one, let's see what the student wrote about um, homelessness in America. So this is huge, guys. I, and and I can't I can't um re I I can't underscore this enough. Because your intro paragraph is where you set up the game plan for your paper. In this instance, it's essential that you make clear what your issue is and um what the what the what your proposed solution is. Mm, so so this check this out. Uh, in the United States alone, there are millions of homeless people. Although this is such a serious problem, there strangely has not been many changes put into place in order to change it. It has become a very questionable topic that has encouraged many to advocate for the homeless people. All the positive changes we have, we see have had a pattern of only being done by the private sector, American citizens. We are the ones who are providing free help and services within our own businesses. Um, yeah, things like churches and Salvation Army, so on and so forth. Even though it's a great contribution, it's not enough. The role of government is to facilitate its citizens' quotidian life, which means a day to day. They should be the ones who are creating and funding programs to help the homeless population get their lives back on track. Excuse me. Shifting help for homeless people from the private sector to the public sector um, is what needs to happen in order to see an influential change. So this student is advocating for shifting from um, private organizations like, like missions and, and Salvation Army um, to actually have the government step in. So that's what this solution, um, so sorry, that's what this student is looking at. <clears throat> um, let's take a look at the next one and see what this one writes about. And you, and you can take a look at this in more depth on your own time. This one's writing about um, switching over to fossil fuels, and they're advocating, let's see, preservation of um, our forests and alternative energy sources like solar, wind, and hydroelectric. Okay, so conservation of our forests, and uh, they're advocating for alternative energy sources. So see, see how that works? Um, the intro, it, it has to be clear what the issue is and what you're proposing that, that we do about it to help towards that issue. Lastly, this third student, let's see what they're looking at. Ooh, health. So look, they're looking at diabetes um, and obesity. Uh, specifically, this one uh, student is looking at how really the marketing campaigns for junk food, like like super sugary cereals, um, that are targeted to kids, are, are done in this very like cartoony way. So, this um, this student was proposing that um, there be a regulation to prohibit this, you know. Uh, and I think that's so interesting because when you're a child you're in your formative years, literally, you're in formation, you're developing, and that's precisely when you need the most um, nutrients in your diet because you're growing, right? And so to give all these sugary things that that are um, devoid of nutrients really is a, is a disservice. So that that's pretty neat. So here's an example of, of that. 
um, the issue being type 2 diabetes, heart disease, obesity. And then, um, as you can see, the solution is made clear. Um, some, something that I wrote up is this to help you out. Um, it's, a, it's a synthesis of what you're doing in this paper. And I'll go ahead and actually in include this document to our module. Um, so number one, issue, right? Context, this means background. What's the history or background that led to the development of this issue? Why is this a significant issue? If this issue is left unchecked, what possible negative outcomes might be brought on in the future? That's a, that's a big one. That actually helps to prove why your issue is a, is a big deal if you think into the future. Like, if left unchecked, what will can a potential tomorrow look like with this issue even amplified, right? Next part is the solution aspect. Um, why will it work? Why is it better than others? What might those opposing say against it? What would it take to enact it? Why is it viable? Just like we talked about. So those are the uh, the two parts to this paper. It's like the, the good one-two punch, right? <laughs> Issue and then a solution. So I'm going to upload this document as well to our module, and I'm sure that will be helpful. Uh, okay. Lastly, oh, let's return... Lastly, guys, okay, here we go. Uh, so we're going to click here, Research Paper Outline Worksheet. So to help you with your thinking, um, you have this assignment. And this assignment is due, let me check this out, July 6th. Okay. So it's due two Saturdays from now. Um, I just wanted you to begin to think about this because um, this Saturday is the 29th. Yeah, this Saturday is the 29th. Okay, so it's it's due two Saturdays from today. Um, but uh, check out this this outline. So with this outline, uh, go ahead and, and download it, and um, you can just you can get uh, a program to type in your 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 answers. Um, Either that, or you can print it and write it out in pen, and then scan it. But honestly, I think it's easier if you just directly t type in your, your answers. Um, but essentially, it's helping you to begin to craft and think about the skeleton of your of your paper. Yeah. Um, so for the intro, opening statement, um, how will you first bring the reader into your essay. Essentially, how you how you will introduce your topic in this instance, um, issue and solution, right? This is crucial, guys. Remember, we practiced thesis um, at, during a previous module. Now's your time to shine. <laughs> so um, this should be what your proposal is. Um, what we should do about the issue that you're exploring. Um, the rest, remember, we we talked about how body paragraphs are fleshing out the skeleton that you are proposing in your intro, yeah? Um, so, so check this out, body paragraphs. This will help you to, to craft it. And this is crucial, guys. Every, remember that every body paragraph has to support your thesis somehow, yeah? Just like, just like the lawyer, um, everything that they do is supporting their central argument which, for example, might be proving that their client is innocent of tax evasion, yeah? Everything that the lawyer is going to do is going to be towards that aim, of, of proving the innocence of that client of tax evasion. So um, here's the body paragraphs and uh, the concluding paragraph. Remember we talked about how the conclusion is, it's like it's like the ultimate uh, takeaway for, th for the reader. So um, think, think of it that way. It's it's the so what after okay so you've read all of this um which what what should you go ahead and do about all this info now why is it a big deal um and you can take a look at our sample conclusion paragraphs um that we had in a previous module just for for some help here all right so this is the worksheet guys and um complete this worksheet by um, July 6th, by 11.59 p.m. 
this is the assignment link. You're just going to upload it into here. And it's going to help a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot with your planning for this. And actually, it will help to allay, allay anxiety. All right, guys. So um, I hope that all this helps. And shoot me, uh, shoot me your questions. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, all right, this is it. Yeah, so shoot me your questions, guys. Um, I hope you have fun with this. I, th I think beyond that, um, yeah, that's that, that's really the most important thing is just choosing something that you care about. That's what makes this engaging and actually fun. <laughs>